Activist Radio is on the air. You have tuned in to the Mark Harrington Show, sponsored by Created Equal. Mark is training a new generation of leaders to take on the culture of death and win. You don't like abortion, don't have one. The only thing that can be said to be objective truth is that there is no objective truth. It does come out in one piece. It comes out in one piece. I would argue that we certainly are not all created equal. And now, here's Mark. The Democrat presidential candidates continue to double down on late-term abortion and infanticide. Every single one of them now. It's the litmus test for the Democrat Party. If you're going to run for president, you have to support late-term abortion and infanticide. You're listening to your radio activist on The Mark Harrington Show. Your guest here, or your host here, Mark Harrington. Coming to you from the Created Equal Studios. You can go to markharrington.org to find out more on the, our radio show and also go to createdequal.org to find out about our pro life ministry. So, you know, now we're weeks into this since the Democrats first came out in support of infanticide and they're not backing down. They're not backing down. Every single presidential candidate on the Democrat side is now in support of late term abortion and infanticide. It's unreal. It is the new standard for the Democrat Party. We used to have something called Blue Dog Democrats. They were pro-life. Well, they no longer exist. (laughs) They're no longer around in Congress or, for that matter, in the Democrat Party across America. They're not. They're all you have to you have to toe the party line if you're going to be a Democrat and you're running for, for uh, office. You have to be pro-abortion, and now beyond that, you have to be for late-term abortion and infanticide. You don't believe me? Let's play a clip. We're going to play a clip. This is Bernie Sanders, the socialist, the communist, who again is running for president. And at this time, he is the front runner for the Democrat national uh, uh, nomination. And he came out yesterday or this week uh, when he was interviewed on Fox News when asked about abortion, late-term abortion and infanticide. If you would play that clip. Question. You, you said yesterday, I watched your rally in Pittsburgh, that no one should tell a woman what to do with her own body. <laughs> with, with regard to abortion, do I'm you, sorry. with regard to abortion, do you believe that a woman should be able to terminate a pregnancy up until the moment of birth? Look, I think that that happens very, very rarely, and I think very this rarely. is being made into a political issue. Political okay. issue. So I think it's rare, it's being made into a political issue, but at the end of the day, I believe that the decision over abortion belongs to a woman and a physician, not the federal government, not the state government, and not the local government. Senator, there you go. There you go. I mean, it's unbelievable. Bernie Sanders running for president. You know, asked about late-term abortion, asked about infanticide, went back to the talking points on abortion, basically saying it's a woman's right to choose, right to choose between her and her doctor. And by the way, she'll never see her doctor if she's going to have an abortion because the doctor never gets to meet her, just comes in and, and kills the baby and leaves. We understand that. But that is the, that is the standard now for the, the Democrat Party. You have to be pro-abortion. You have to be for late-term abortion and infanticide. You know, he kind of dodged the question, didn't really want to answer that about late-term abortion because clearly the American people aren't with the Democrats on this entirely. But they understand in order to get funding from Planned Parenthood and NARAL and all the abortion groups out there, the pressure groups, they've got to toe the line on child killing. I've said this once, I'll say it again. If you're a Democrat and you're listening to the sound of my voice, you need to renounce that. You you can no longer, if you're a Christian, you call call yourself a Christian, you claim Christ, you can't vote uh, Democrat now because every single one of them is pro-abortion, pro-late-term abortion, and more likely pro-infanticide. How can you throw the lever for a, a candidate who supports the killing of pre-born and born children. How can you do that? So if you claim Christ, you're listening to the sound of my voice, you need to renounce your affiliation to the Democrat Party 
and no longer vote Democrat. Now, I'm not saying you got to vote pro Republican, but you cannot be allied with those who support child killing. So we're seeing this still. This, this story has legs. It continues to have legs. It's going to, I think, continue throughout the presidential campaign. It's going to be a huge campaign issue. I think it's a obviously a loser for them, uh, for those Democrats. But uh, I guess it remains to be seen that we could elect to the highest office in the land, or for that, the, for that matter, the world, someone who supports late-term abortion and infanticide. I guess we'll find out this time around, won't we? So here's what I want to do. I'm going to shift gears a little bit. We're going to be talking about our campus work. I'm the president and founder of Created Equal. It's an organization that raises up the next generation of leaders to go on college and high school campuses and debate abortion. Right now, we're in the state of Michigan. We started this week. Actually, a couple of weeks ago, we were in, in North Carolina as part of what we call the Road Trip for Life. And that is where we put young people on the road for weeks at a time, going city to city to city, state, 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 uh, abortion clinic from abortion clinic to high schools and colleges all across America. And this week we're in the state of Michigan. And my good friend and colleague, Sam Riley is with us. He is coming to us from the uh, Eastern Michigan University there in Ypsilanti. Sam, thanks for being on the program. Thanks for having me on. So Sam is our content manager. He's also the team leader, a field captain for the Road Trip for Life. And uh, Sam's been traveling now with this team for several weeks. We're in North Carolina, many campuses down there. This week, we have been at uh, Grand Valley Community College, Grand Rapids. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure that. What's the name of that one, Sam? Uh, it's Grand Rapids Community College and Grand Valley State University. Okay. And today is Eastern Michigan University, and then you'll be going where else? Uh, to finish out this week, we're going to be going to Michigan State University, and then next week we'll be going to the Wisconsin schools. Wisconsin schools. Okay. So Sam is out there on the campus right now. You can tell by the wind uh, that he's right there on campus at the busiest part of campus displaying created equals abortion victim photography. Uh, Sam, if you would, I want to throw you a couple questions here. You know, we get a lot of grief sometimes because we use abortion video and pictures on college campuses and elsewhere. This week, we displayed our Jumbotron Monday and Tuesday. Uh, how'd it go? Oh, it went excellent. So uh, yesterday at the Western Michigan University, we were out there with a student group and uh, Kaylee, the president of the student organization said that she has never had more conversations about abortion on our college campus in the uh, in a couple of years that she's been running the pro-life group there. So we got to see hundreds of people engaging in conversation throughout the day. We had about 150 people out there talking about abortion. So the idea that these images do not start, at least start conversations and, uh, you know, at the very least uh, start them, uh, even even if someone doesn't want to admit they change minds, you have to admit they, they start conversations because we're having them. You can see them in the background right here. We're having conversations about abortion throughout the entire day and they do start conversations. They do uh, open up the conversation about abortion. So Sam, we're working with uh, Protect Like Michigan. That's Kristen Polo's organization. Uh, I assume that they were sponsors on that campus. Is that right? That's right, yeah. So, you know, Protect Life Michigan is a partner of uh, Create Equal. We've uh, formed a joint venture, if you will, to help reach uh, campuses in the state of Michigan. And so they're sponsoring our presence this week on many of those campuses. Uh, Sam, well, is there a, I mean, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, people give us grief for victim photos and using them. A lot of people say, well, hey, it just turns people off. Uh, because they're offended, they're not going to listen to you. What is your experience with that? Yeah, you know, I agree that it does turn people off. It turns people off to abortion. The thing is, people think that we have to be running some kind of high-level marketing campaign, but what we're doing is we're de-incentivizing. We're making it so people look at abortion and they feel more negatively about abortion afterwards. So even the people that walk away saying that they think that a woman should have a choice to do it, they're personally disgusted by that choice and they know exactly what it is. And that information has been uh, has been ingrained into their mind through the images. So, uh, yeah, it, we agree it turns people off. It, it doesn't turn people off so much to us, though. It turns people off to abortion. 
So again, I'm with Sam Riley. He's our content manager and uh, team leader for Road Trip for Life. We're in the state of Michigan this week. He's on the campus of Eastern Michigan right there. So our, our Michigan listeners there and our station out of Detroit, uh, this is your own home turf that we're, uh, we're involved with this today uh, in, in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Uh, Sam, I know you, you've probably had lots of conversations. In fact, you were having one right when I called you with some protesters. If you would share with us uh, one of those conversations you've had in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, so just yesterday at the uh, at Western Michigan University, I was standing in front of the Jumbotron when two people came up to me and they were, uh, I asked them what they thought about abortion. And they said that they thought there were certain circumstances and it was essentially the woman's choice. And then I directed their uh, their attention to the screen and I said, is this a human being that's being killed here? Do we think that this is okay to do this to another human being? And they watched the video for probably uh, one minute, and uh, they turned back to me and they said, no, abortion's never okay. After seeing what abortion is, wow. instead of some vague you know, rhetoric of choice of the woman's body, of, of whatever, when they actually see that there's another body involved, that, that child is losing their limbs, their arms, they're being sucked out of their mother's womb with a force 20 times that of a you know, normal household vacuum, they can see that that's not the woman's choice and that's not uh, the woman's body. It's someone else's body. And so, yeah, we absolutely see people change their mind every day, just like those two people I talked to yesterday. So, folks, just so you know, we use a jumbotron. And if you don't know what that is, think about sporting events. You know, when you're watching a football game inside in a stadium or what have you, these are the big LED screens that play the video of the game. This is the same basic technology that we're using. It's just portable. It's on a trailer. We bring it onto campus, we roll it onto the campus, we set it up in the highest traffic area of campus and we turn it on. And it shows abortion victim photos and videos, still images and video, video of abortion in progress and video of abortion aftermath, the actually piecing together of the babies after they're killed. And we've been doing this now for about five years, uh, mostly in large venues like the March for Life and other things. But years ago, we started taking it to college campuses, and we've been doing that more and more. In fact, we've really ramped it up this year. We're going to be taking the Jumbotron to probably twice or maybe three times more places than we did last year as part of our mission across America, taking it to state capitals that are supportive of late-term abortion and infanticide, taking it to states that are supporting or at least introducing heartbeat bills and total abortion bans. I mean, we're going to get this thing out and around because we believe abortion needs to be seen, to be understood, and everybody understands that victim photos, graphic images have always played a part in social reform. And I think we've really turned the corner, even though it's been 46 years of debate over victim photography and whether it's useful or helpful, I don't find a whole lot of opposition to it anymore. And I think primarily because I think we've proven that it finally works and people are kind of, you know, shutting up, frankly. I mean, we have video come out every week, at least one a week of a changed mind, and it has a lot to do with the victim photography. So if you want to find out more about our Jumbotron, if you would like to invite us to your campus, to your city or what have you, you'd like to have us set this up in the public area, uh, in your town or whatever, give us a call or contact us at Created Equal. You can go to createdequal.org. That's createdequal.org and say, yes, I'd love you to come to our event. Uh, this summer, we'll be taking to all those late-term abortion states like New York, Vermont, uh, Virginia, uh, and other states. So, all right. So, Sam, listen, um, do you find, and this is a, kind of a tough question because sometimes I don't notice the difference per se. Is there a difference when you set up the still photography of prenatal babies and abortion compared to the video? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, yesterday was just a testament to the power of the video and showing people what abortion is visually and in real time. We had, like I said, 150 people standing around that Jumbotron just talking to our, our volunteers, talking to our people, and then viewing the Jumbotron itself. There's a, it, it, there's a whole new level of, uh, of outrage from our protesters and then intrigue from people that are just in the middle that don't know what abortion is. And so we get people that are protesting us, people that are yelling at us, and it causes a big crowd, and they see that our people are uh, responding graciously, responding calmly and in a loving way and not yelling back or returning the favor, but we're just showing them what abortion is, um, you know, showing them what choice is, whereas the people that are advocating for choice don't actually want to see what that is. 
Um, so no, absolutely. There's a, there's a whole new level of, of uh, outreach that we're able to do when the video is playing because, you know, the crowds are a testament to that. They come out, they, they, they talk, they engage with us. Uh, we get people that are in the middle coming over to the other side because they're in these crowds or they're hearing our people give responses. Well, I've always said that a picture is worth a thousand words, but a video is worth a million words. And that's why we've, uh, you know, been able to harness this new technology that has become more affordable. And also the, the, you know, the resolution of the videos have been increasing over the years. And now we're hoping to you even put more than one of these on the road as much as we can. So, uh, again, if you want to find out more about our Jumbotron project, traveling the country, go to createdequal.org if you'd like to invite us to your city. You know, I'm sure a lot of people in our audience is wondering, Sam, do you ever get attacked? Do you ever get uh, the signs vandalized? Uh, has anyone ever been threatened? Have we ever been assaulted? Does that happen commonly or is it just on a rare case that that occurs or is that a regular thing? Oh, no, you know, the, the party that wants to kill innocent human beings, they're never violent towards our volunteers. No, we, we never get people that are violent. Uh, no, you know, in, in reality, every that single day, me, I understand. Yeah, every single day we get people that are trying to hurt our people or hurt our signs. Just yesterday we had a sign that was spray painted that was uh, co totally defaced um, because they, they can't stand to see what abortion is. Um, we've been yeah. violently attacked before. We had a girl arrested at a, at a university in North Carolina because she tried to steal a sign and then throw it off of a roof. Not right. kidding there. They actually did that. Um, so, you know, we, we, get to, we see that all, all the time. And, uh, and you know, how do you handle things, yourself when that happens? What, what do you guys, what's the protocol when that happens? Well, you know, we protect, uh, we protect people. We don't protect property. And so if someone's going to destroy our property, we don't react violently towards that. Uh, we do, however, file uh, we we file charges with the police if we're able. Uh, if, if, we let uh, the law enforcement handle it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, gotcha. Yeah, uh, you know, this week I just saw yesterday. There's an article in the newspaper about the Columbine High School students. Mr. Producer, if you want to pop that up, this is very interesting. I think. I mean, we, regularly we're seeing things in the news that prove that victim photography, graphic victim photography, bloody images are used throughout the media to make their point. And this story is about the Columbine students, current Columbine students. We all know what happened to Columbine about 20 years ago uh, with that school shooting there. And these students now are putting something on their driver's license like you would if you were a organ donor. If you were to, uh, in something on the driver's license, if they were to be killed in a school shooting, they are putting something on their driver's license to basically let people know to take a photograph of them and publicize it on social media. They're calling it hashtag my last shot. Uh, and again, what, what this is, I mean, you can you can argue whether this is wise or not from the school's point of view or from the student's point of view and all that. But this, again, is just testimony. The fact that victim photography has a role, even people on the left, which I would consider those probably they're not probably conservative, likely because they're probably anti first or Second Amendment folks, per se. And you got David Hogg. He's leaving the way. If I think that's his name. Uh, anyway, they're 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 publicizing the fact that they want to put this on their driver's license. So if they were killed in a, a school shooting, that they would want people to publicize the photograph of them uh, online. And I just think again, here we are. Uh, even those on the left, not politically conservative, not pro-life, are you know support the idea of using victim photography to make their case to start the debate. And so we've been doing that for you know, 46 years now. And uh, yet it seems like some people still don't get it, you know, that there's some kind of double standard that it won't work for abortion, but it works for everything else. Victim photography works for every other kind of injustice and changing people's hearts and minds. But for some reason, it doesn't work for abortion. And I think we're hopefully past that now. And the evidence is overwhelming anecdotally. Uh, we have evidence all across the country. We have all kinds of testimonies, plus some studies, which, you know, are helpful uh, but to make our case. And so we believe you got to show it in order to start the conversation. We've got to start the conversation by setting the facts, the foundation of that based on the idea that abortion is an act of violence. 
that kills a baby. So Sam, uh, again, I'm uh, Sam Riley, leader of our Road Trip for Life, is with our team there at Eastern Michigan University. Sam, where are you going to be tomorrow and next week? Tomorrow we're going to be at Michigan State University, and then next week we're going to be uh, at a couple different schools in Wisconsin. We're going to be at the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee and Madison, and then a couple of, uh, of uh, community colleges, a few other places, uh, high schools and abortion facilities next week. All right, folks. So if you would keep uh, Sam Riley and our Road Trip for Life team uh, in prayer as they travel to these universities in Michigan and Wisconsin. And folks, also, we'll have our internship starting this summer. Uh, we'll be traveling to, like I said, these uh, pro-abortion, these pro-infanticide, pro-late-term abortion states in the month of June. So keep those uh, in prayer as well as we plan for those. And, uh, and I, once again, I mean, I, I want to reiterate that last week we, uh, our governor here signed into law the heartbeat bill, which will criminalize abortion at the detectable heartbeat here in the state of Ohio. And it's huge. I mean, we are making progress. we got a long, long, long way to go on this. But uh, thanks to people like Sam Riley and other young people across America, we are winning the next generation of leaders uh, to take on the culture of death and win. And one of our premier programs is the Justice Ride. So if you're listening to the sound of my voice and you're a parent, you got a young person, you'd like to get them involved in the pro-life movement in a very concrete and effective way, then you need to let us get, uh, let, get us involved with the, your young person. And you can go to createdequal.org. Hey, Sam, we got about four minutes left here. Uh, what, what are some of the harder questions? And I don't want to get into a long conversation here, but let me just ask you, I mean, one we hear often is people will say, they'll walk up and say, well, what about rape and incest? You would force a woman to carry her baby to term if she was uh, raped. How do you answer that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we hear that, of course, every single day. That's the first thing people want to know. And to us, we, we always just say, First of all, rape is a horrible thing and it's, it should never happen. But abortion is horrible for the same reason. It hurts an innocent human being. And so the question is, if abortion is doing the same thing, it's hurting an innocent human being, do we punish the second victim of the rape by killing the preborn child? Obviously, that child's going to grow up knowing that his, his father was a rapist, knowing that he uh, he didn't have anything to do with that. It wasn't his fault. Knowing that his mom didn't want that to happen, of course. But when normally we take care of victims, we don't say that it's okay to kill victims. Uh, so we certainly shouldn't be killing innocent human beings. We shouldn't be punishing children for the crimes of their father. What other questions do you get? I mean, what's a very common question? What about, say, um, you know, the life of the mother or what are you going to do yeah. with all these children? Are you going to adopt these children? How about that one? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I just had a girl yesterday say that, you know, are you going to adopt all these children? And I said, well, so let's say that you say that rape is wrong. And I agree with you. You just said a second ago that rape is wrong. Now, if you're going to oppose rape and say that we have to have rape laws, anti-rape laws on the books, are you going to take care and provide therapy for each and every rape victim? Is that uh, incumbent upon you to do that? Or is it the right thing to say that we ought to do the right thing in our law? And she, uh, she saw the point eventually. She eventually stopped using that argument. Um, so, you know, I think people just don't think consistently about this. They try to boil it down to preferences as opposed to objective morality. Uh, but then the other, the other thing that people bring up, of course, that you just said it was the life of the mother. And I usually point them to the many physicians, over uh, ten, uh, a thousand physicians uh, signed the Dublin Declaration that said that there was never a medically necessary reason in order to save the life of the mother. They said that they could always diagnose it a different way. They could always, uh, you know, do an emergency C-section in a late uh, trimester uh, pregnancy, and they could save the life of that child and the mother. They could treat them as two patients and not just one patient. Um, so I think that, you know, it, people think that the medical, uh, you know, field doesn't have doctors that have bias, but it absolutely does. And sometimes it's just expedient and more cost effective to kill a child as opposed to actually provide care as a physician and take care of that child. My guest again was, has been Sam Riley. He's our content manager here at Created Equal. He's also the team leader, field captain for the Road Trip for Life, which has been right now, they were at North Carolina universities. This week, they're at the Michigan universities. Today, he's at the Eastern Michigan University there in Ips Ypsilanti. And next week, we'll be traveling up to Wisconsin to finish off the road trip and finish off this semester uh, as part of the road trip for life. Also traveling with the Jumbo or with, with Sam is the Jumbotron. 
which we are displaying on some of the selected campuses. And folks, if you want us to come to your campus, you contact us at createdequal.org. We'll bring all of our abortion victim photography and video. So you've been listening to your radio activist, Mark Harrington, here on the Mark Harrington Show. To find out more about our radio program, you can go to markharrington.org. And you can follow us on all of our social media sites on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, also YouTube. So we'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember, America, to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to become a witness against the evil, evil plague in America, call Created Equal at 614-269-7808, 614-269-7808, or go online to createdequal.net, createdequal.net. Be sure to tune to The Mark Harrington Show next time for your marching orders in the culture war.